Dent for the record. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Will Keneally. Can you feel it? In just 12 short months, we will be in the middle of the next presidential election. And stop me if you've heard this before, but Wisconsin will play a pivotal role deciding the next president here in the Badger State. And that coincides with a ground game. Volunteers pounding pavement to tell voters about this crucial election. We'll talk with Republican Party Chair Brian Chimming in a few moments, but joining us now is the chair of the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, Ben Wickler, and thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Will. Really appreciate it. So you're doing this uh, one year to win event uh, throughout the state this weekend right now. Uh, what all is going into that? So this weekend, in every corner of Wisconsin, in 115 different municipalities, 58 counties across the state, we have 425, that's a lot of numbers I'm throwing out, uh, 425 different places will be launching door-to-door -door canvases. This is neighborhood by neighborhood, people talking to people in their own communities. And our goal is not to persuade anyone of anything this weekend. It is to go out and talk to people who have not been reliable Democratic voters in the past and ask them what's on their mind. It's to build a relationship, find out what issues are drawing people towards, you know, President Biden, Tammy Baldwin, Democrats in the legislature, what might be holding them back, and use that to figure out who we should be trying to turn out next year, who we should be trying to persuade, expanding the universe of voters. Because what we know is that election after election after election in Wisconsin comes down to these hairline margins. And if we can find 25,000 more people that vote for Democrats next year, it could make all the difference. Presidents will be at the top of the ticket next year. Um, we've seen RFK Jr., uh, some Democrats starting to challenge the sitting president right now. Especially in Wisconsin here, uh, do you think Biden will be a good standard bearer for Democrats up and down the ballot to rally around? We're so excited about President Biden's re-election campaign and Vice President Harris. What we've seen over and over is that the more voters find out about what President Biden and Vice President Harris have done in office, the more excited they are about the ticket. We're in the pre-campaign moment right now. So this is, you know, just kind of what people are thinking as they look around and without really seeing the, the, the facts laid out and the messages laid out. Now, the flip side of that coin, uh, you have to have a Republican challenger, right? It looks like it's, at this point, uh, former President Donald Trump. Is that who you'd want? Would you want to face anybody else at the top of the ticket? And then also, too, we have that Senate race uh, for Tammy Baldwin. So in the presidential race, the reality is all the candidates are running as ultra-MAGA candidates. So either it's MAGA warmed over with Donald Trump or it's MAGA with a fresh coat of paint from one of these other candidates. They're all running uh, campaigns that are uh, embracing the big lie about the 2020 election. They're all uh, campaigns and candidates who would sign a national abortion ban into law. And all of them embrace kind of MAGAnomics, tax cuts for the ultra-rich at the expense of the middle class, instead of the kinds of investments in infrastructure and supporting manufacturing that grow the economy from the middle out. So. Whichever opponent we're up against, I think we have a really strong hand to play because people want a president who's looking out for them. And for uh, Senator Baldwin, uh, we have Eric Hovde, certainly. Um, not many other people have jumped into that race right now. If you were going to draft a Republican to run against her, do you have a sense of who that would look like? Dan Kelly is who I would love to draft to run for U.S. Senate. Okay. Uh, if, if that didn't come together... Each of these Republicans has the same MAGA problem. And, you know, in Eric Hovde's case, he's in Laguna Beach, California, uh, you know, near his, his giant bank. He's one of Orange County's most influential people, two times running. Uh, it's unclear why he thinks Wisconsin is the place where he should run for Senate. But, uh, you know, I don't think Wisconsinites are uh, trying to draft him to move back to the Badger State to, to challenge Tammy Baldwin, who they know is fighting for them, no matter whether you're a rural voter, or suburban, or live in a city. Uh, she's someone who's looking out for the interests of Wisconsinites, and Wisconsinites appreciate it. Talked about the White House. We talked about the Senate. Uh, what about the House? We have two relatively competitive uh, House seats up next year. That's right. So the first congressional district with Brian Stile, who's in Paul Ryan's old seat, he's Paul Ryan's old staffer, and then Derek Van Orden in the third congressional district. Both of those districts are pretty evenly split right now between Republicans and Democrats. And this year, the National Democratic uh, Campaign Committee, which didn't focus on Wisconsin last year, they're zeroed on, on those two districts. We have candidates already announced in both of those districts. I think there's a real chance that voters, given the, the option, to remove the people who are responsible for uh, the new Republican Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, who wants to criminalize same-sex relationships and pass a national abortion ban, there's a real chance voters will go in a different direction. And if you can imagine it, Wisconsin uh, could have a 4-4 congressional delegation, four Republicans, four Democrats, for a state that is split 50-50 when you look at the, the general voting public.
And so last time around, uh, Democrats were largely on the ground upset um, for the DNC or DCCC not pitching in enough um, for that race. Do you have anything that would you know sway their concerns uh, or swage their concerns on that? Front? Well, the the National Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee was just on defense last time. They were only defending incumbent Democrats. The third congressional district was an open seat. The first as a Republican incumbent uh, across the country. You know, Democrats lost a bunch of different seats. This election cycle, they are on offense. They have been very public that their goal is to win a majority of the United States House. And the, the road to a majority in the House, the same as it does for the Senate majority and the Electoral College majority, it runs through the Badger State. So a little bit of a hypothetical here. Um, if the state Supreme Court issues any kind of ruling on legislative districts and it's a favorable ruling for you, so you have all 33 Senate seats in play at the state level, how much does that factor into your game plan right now? Are you banking on that or is it, are you still waiting to see kind of what happens with that case? In Wisconsin politics, you have to expect the unexpected. So anything could be possible. Uh, if the current maps stand, then we'll be fighting against the Republican attempt to get super majorities in both legislative chambers. They already have it in the Senate. They would be trying to get it in the state assembly. If we went all the way to the other end and had fair maps where each side had a 50-50 shot, if, if the vote is split uh, evenly, then the legislative districts would be split evenly. That would mean there are competitive districts all over Wisconsin in places that have been rigged for the last 12 years. And so we're actively now recruiting candidates, working with Greta Neubauer and Melissa Egg guard to find folks who are, who are excited and interested in running for state legislature, running trainings for people who want to work on campaigns, and this weekend with one year to win, knocking on doors in every part of Wisconsin so that if we have competitive state legislative races next year, we have a chance, a once in a generation chance, to, to, to really change the direction and try to move Wisconsin in the, the forward direction that our state's motto uh, says our state is supposed to be about. State Democratic Party Chair Ben Wickler, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Will. And when we come back, we sit down with the chair of the state Republican Party on what next year it will look like for them. We'll be right back after this. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Madison Gas and Electric. MG&E, building your community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Visit MGE2050.com. This is Kathy. She's about to see her dentist. She's afraid. Not because of the drill, but because of the bill. A big bill. But Kathy doesn't need to be afraid, and neither do you. Thanks to affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company. It's easy to get this coverage. Don't believe me? Call or go online for all the details. You can even have this free information kit. This isn't a discount plan or preventive-only coverage. This is real dental insurance. It helps pay for over 400 procedures. That's a lot. I'm talking cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, even dentures. Bottom line, you'll have help paying for routine care and expensive major work. But if you want deductibles, forget it. There aren't any. No annual maximum either. Plus, you can see any dentist you want. Stop fearing the big bill. Start saving at the dentist. Call now or go to sendinfokit.com. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. Imagine a world with no drama. I haven't signed Jody's card yet. At 4imprint, finding the promotional products you need to create a memorable moment is an easy mission. Our expert team will take care of every detail to make your success a certainty. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. MG&E, building your community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy. Driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Visit MGE2050.com. Welcome back. For Republicans in Wisconsin, the last few elections have had mixed results. The GOP lost their bid to unseat Governor Evers last fall, and conservatives failed to keep a seat on the state Supreme Court, allowing the balance of that court to flip for the liberals for the first time in more than a decade. But Republicans sent U.S. Senator Ron Johnson back to Washington for a third term. Now, heading into 2024, what does the game plan look like for the GOP here in Wisconsin? Joining us now to talk shop is Brian Chimming, chair of the Republican Party of Wisconsin. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. So with a year out into the election, what does that game plan look like for you guys? 
Well, I've, I've been saying uh, all around the state and all over the country, Wisconsin really is not one of 50 states next year. We're one of five. We've had 12 elections in the last 24 years in this state that have been decided by less than 30,000 votes. So what does that tell us? That, that tells us that really it's about the ground game uh, and that uh, talking to voters across this state in every county, in every community, every town, every village, uh, is a very, very high priority for us. We've been cr recruiting volunteers like crazy. It's really even even short of the convention, which obviously is a big deal uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, the energy level out there, I've been in dozens of counties since I've been chair in the last six months. The energy level is really, really high. And uh, so I'm optimistic, uh, number one. Uh, and number two, look, 2022, each party had its disappointments, but I, I will tell you, um, we elected the first Republican member of Congress in 26 years out in western Wisconsin. We picked up three members of the state assembly and almost took a supermajority there, picked up a state senate seat and did take a supermajority there, elected a new Republican state treasurer. So we have a lot of victories to build on, and we're going to. So actually, specifically to those legislative districts, uh, there's a lawsuit before the state Supreme Court right now that could actually see all the state Senate turnover and people have to run in these new districts. How much does that factor into your game plan for 2024? Well, we we sit here and look, uh, out of state left wing groups poured millions of dollars into Wisconsin to take over the Supreme Court. And now that they have the majority, what what they want to do is to essentially throw out the districts that were approved by the courts uh, two years ago and make people vote in different districts than they just voted on. And that, to me personally, having watched these things for about 30 years, is a travesty. It's an embarrassment, and we shouldn't be in this position. But because the left has targeted Wisconsin, uh, I can see a situation where the Supreme Court will try and throw out those maps, not only legislative maps, but gubernatorial maps. So people watching us right now literally could end up in a district that they've never lived in in their life. And I think that's unfair to the voters of this state. I hope the Supreme Court does not do that. But, uh, and I think it would be, honestly, I think it would be a shame if they did. And, and, and frankly, an affront to the voters of this state. Now, at the top of the ticket next year will be that race for president, and the Republican field is narrowing with the departure of former Vice President Mike Pence. We're expecting right. a Marquette poll on the primary next week. Um, from your travels, right, as you're traveling out, out, out and about around the state, what are you hearing from folks about their preference for who that top of the ticket candidate might be? Well, the advantage that, that I've got, and we, we saw it play out in the debate here in Milwaukee, is that I have any number of candidates that almost any voter can vote for as a Republican presidential candidate. I mean, I think the advantage that we have as Republicans is that I have a lot of choices. Obviously, President Trump is, is in a good polling position right now, but, but historically, folks that lead this far out aren't necessarily always the nominee, so we'll let that play itself out. I'd rather have the situation that I'm in, where right? we've got all sorts of great choices than the situation the Democrats are in, which they are stuck with Joe Biden, who is upside down on every single poll being taken lately, including the Marquette poll that you referenced before here in Wisconsin. So he's, I mean, you've got well over 70% of Democrats, not, not all voters, but Democrats, saying that they want somebody else on the top of the ticket for the Democratic Party. And, and, and Kamala Harris is not their fallback position. So I've got a situation where I got all sorts of great candidates that almost everybody on the street can vote for. They're stuck with Joe Biden. And I think that is a major advantage for us, not only here in Wisconsin, but across the country. And the polling bears that out. And so also to whoever candidate emerges, um, especially for us in Wisconsin next April, uh, we'll have to face Biden um, and the Democrats, um, especially down ballot with uh, Senator Tammy Baldwin up next year too. Who do you expect that would look like? So here's Tammy Baldwin's problem. She's a 95% vote. I mean, think about this. She's a 95% vote with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, which automatically puts her in a tough position here in Wisconsin, where right now, uh, not only is the president and vice president upside down in the numbers, almost their position on almost every issue, whether it's crime, the border, the fact that we've had almost 18% inflation uh, under Joe Biden, mortgage rates pushing 8%, 
all of and now terrorism as well. So on almost every issue facing the voters right now, Joe Biden and Tammy Baldwin are upside down. So we've got already a couple of candidates running. There are two or three others that are talking about it. I think we'll have more clarity on that in the next 30 to 60 days. But I'm very, very confident we're going to we're going to a have a strong candidate and b that Tammy Baldwin's going to have to face her record, not the record of her trying to talk like a moderate occasionally like she is right now but a almost 12 year long record of being on the left side of the Senate Democratic Conference in DC. And that is a side of the issues that the people of the state do not agree with. So much of the story of 2022 and a little bit this April in 2023 uh, was the issue of abortion. Uh, when we talk about 2024 and when we sit down uh, likely late next year, uh, what do you think in terms of issues, the story of 2024 will be? I think the story of the issues in 2024 will be the economy, will be the border and terrorism, and will be whether the fact that people in this state, people who are watching us right now overwhelmingly believe that the country is on the wrong track and that the Republicans are the ones to put it back on the right track. And also, frankly, uh, to get to, to mention your point before, the enthusiasm is clearly with the Republicans right now. Look, I, I, where are the Democrats going to go? They they can buy all this advertising. They can do all these things that they want. But the people on the streets of this state know what's going on at the convenience store, know what they're paying for gas. They know what they're paying at the grocery store and no amount of multi hundred million dollar advertising by out-of-state interest groups into Wisconsin is going to change that fact. Chair Schimming, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you inviting me. When we come back, the Dane County chapter of the NAACP hosted a banquet with the theme of freedom and thriving for culture and community. Now, what does that mean for what we're seeing on our television screens day in and day out? We'll sit down with the chapter president coming up next. To everyone who craves a fresh meal, come have a taste of Wisconsin. America's Dairyland. As in real dairy. It gives Clover's fresh frozen custard its famous rich and creamy flavor. Like really rich. So rich. Rich and creamy. And our cook to order butter burgers. They're topped with, you guessed it, Wisconsin cheese. But it's the smiles we put on your face with every meal made just for you. It really makes our hearts melt. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome, Welcome to Delicious. delicious. Nice. <laughs> It's here, Wisconsin's newest and most exclusive sports show. Wisconsin Huddle. It's more than just highlights. It's more than X's and O's. It's a dynamic 30-minute weekly special produced for the die-hard fans of Wisconsin Athletics. Embark on an exclusive journey into the lives of some of UW's top athletes as we offer an inside look into their world. Watch Wisconsin Huddle Friday nights at 6.30. Brought to you by Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. When migraine strikes, are the trade-offs of treating worth it? Ubrelvi is another option. It quickly eliminates migraine pain. Do not take with strong CYP3A4 inhibitors. Allergic reactions to Ubrelvi can happen. Most common side effects were nausea and sleepiness. Ask about Ubrelvi. Wake up, people! Rotten sleep means rotten moods, rotten backs, rotten health. Rotten breath goes without saying, but you're in luck. During the Veterans Day sale at Denver Mattress. Save $100 on all Aspen mattresses or take 50 bucks off any easy choice. Purchase any Tempur-Pedic and get a $300 gift. Plus four years, no interest and free shipping. Kick that rotten sleep to the curb. Only at Denver Mattress. The easiest way to get the right mattress. Welcome back. This past weekend was the annual Freedom Fund Banquet for the Dane County chapter of the NAACP. And the theme this year, thrive in the movement, in the culture, and in our community. And the idea of freedom and thriving has a context for what we're seeing right now by way of politics. The guest speaker for the event was the state's attorney general, Josh Call. But what does, what does this idea of freedom mean for the community? And I want to pose that question to our guest, Gregory Jones, the president of the NAACP chapter in Dane County. And thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Will, for having me. Great opportunity to talk about this past weekend's event. So I want to ask, is there a short answer to what this idea of freedom means? 
I think the word freedom in the short message is basically equal opportunity, equity for everyone, regardless of race, creed, or color. So very curious why you kind of bring this idea of uh, thriving for the movement, for the culture and the community for this year specifically. Anything specific to what we're seeing here and now? I think it's important to know that the Dane County branch is a affiliate of the national NAACP. The themes are determined at the national level by our national board, made up of 64 members from across the country. They sit down, deliberate, debate, and decide what the theme would be. The branches have a little flexibility to build on it. The chosen theme this year, in general, by the board was thriving together. Dane County uh, branch decided we were going to build on that. We were going to extract community, culture, and as you, as, you, as you heard earlier, we have a third time piece to it. So we think that what we did was build out the theme and then connect it to our speaker. So what kind of went into that calculus of like how you're going to build out? I mean, because it's way open-ended, right? There are ways to exactly. build that out, yeah. That's exactly right, because the discussion we had at our branch level was driving together can, be, can have a negative input or a positive input. When you think about the issues we now face, are we really thriving? When you think about the opportunities and the passion and the progress, we've made some progress. So it kind of has some good and bad points. So by focusing it on community, culture, and the movement, it gives us an opportunity to really, really focus it in on, on something we can work toward. Absolutely. And so we often talk about these kind of amorphous policies. I mean, I'm the station's political reporter, so right. we talk about these kind of amorphous policies at the Capitol, um, understanding that the Attorney General talked about what we're seeing in terms of, uh, you know, voting rights and um, legislative districts and kind of how that applies. When we talk about some of these big issues, um, big themes for how the country, or especially in Dane County, uh, the state can kind of thrive and move forward, how do you break that down into something that, you know, we can just have a conversation with on a Sunday morning. I think what you do on that is you think about the component parts. You think about how those larger issues can be affected, how they can be drawn into on a local. Let me give you an example. If we think about voting rights, one of the things we're doing in Wisconsin here for this branch is we're looking at all of the previous legislation that's been introduced on voting rights. Some of it's suppressive, much of it's uh, deliberative, and it's going to be, have a negative impact on the voting population. So we've been identifying those to identify what we, or develop what we call a theme. For example, when you think about some of the proposed legislation over the last couple of years where they don't want drop boxes to be uh, available, that limits the opportunity for people to cast a vote. When you think about some of the legislation that's out there where they say, we don't want to see any individuals who are connected to a political organization or an advocacy organization connected to a poll worker. Well, we have an initiative where we're going to build out poll workers. We have a concerted effort to include po young people into the poll worker uh, training, implementation, and programming in Dane County. So that is something that we've talked about at the national level. How do we engage our people in different aspects of the electoral pro pro uh, process? People who have been touched by some of these issues, right, like gun violence, for example, mm -hmm. um, or I know um, it also touched on, uh, like, say, drinking water, nutrition, that kind of stuff as well. Right. Um, who kind of feel this angst and kind of don't know where to go with that. Where would you recommend they start? Well, I'll like tell you where the branches started. What we've done once that event happened is we've reached out to ourselves internally to say, what can we do individually, then what can we do as an organization? As an organization, we've got two projects going on as, a re as it relates to that. We want to identify on a broad basis the quantitative uh, numbers that uh, we've had these gun shootings in the last eight to 10 years for young folk. Uh, those individuals between 18 and 25, we're doing the best we can to get the data from the county, from the city, the health departments, the UW, everywhere we can get it and say, what is the profile? Because this is not new. Then we want to say, how do we engage our families who are affected by those? So we're looking out to reach, to, to reach those individual families who are willing to share with us their life experience now after those events. My personal opinion on it is it's a traumatic uh, event and one that may or may not be um, uh, one that people may not want to talk about. But we have to find a way to say, how do we address it? That message has to come from the people in the community and in the, res the residents from those neighborhoods. We want to be one of the carriers to motivate people to get that message out there. And then I think what we have to do as an organization, a community organization, is be the conduit. To develop the, pro to de develop the forums, to develop the conversation sites and have those conversations going forward because this 
is something that is going to hurt this entire community unless we get our hands on it. And it's got to be a collaborative effort. I'm not saying we're the only ones. Our policymakers, our police departments, our, in, our educators, all of the units must come together on this very issue and offer some, uh, some suggestions to resolve it. Gregory Jones, thanks so much for joining us. No really problem. It. Enjoyed it. We'll Thank be you. right back after this. This right here is confidence in a bottle. Not only does it change you on the outside, but something in the inside, knowing that you're looking better. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt in my life. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Well, today we're going to see one for ourselves and let you be the judge. It's called Plexiderm, and lifestyle expert Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says... This one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. We even have a video, and you'll notice the model has bags underneath his eyes and some sagging, and all he uses is a small amount on a clean, dry face, and that's how easy it is. All right, what's the active ingredient? Okay, so it's silicates that are minerals found in shale rock, and what it does is it tightens and lifts the appearance of bags underneath your eyes, and as little as 10 minutes, no prescriptions, and very little effort. Even watching the video, this is a real, uh, it's a model, but it's a real guy with real bags underneath his eyes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. Feels great, looks even better. And I did this to my father, we were at home. So we applied it to his under eye bags and let me tell you, we were so excited. In under 10 minutes, they visibly disappeared from view and now it is literally part of both of our daily routines. He calls me every single month saying, hey Annette, I'm out of Plexiderm, please send me more. And not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. The way you want to do it is you want to have a clean, dry face. You use a small amount because it's so powerful. You have high school reunions, you have events you want to go to, you want to look years younger, this is it. This Thanksgiving is the best time to try Plexiderm with our starter price of only $14.95. Plus, get free shipping. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Finally this morning, events unfolding late this past week put impeachment back on the table for the state's top elections official. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss allowed an impeachment resolution against Megan Wolf to be referred to an assembly committee, the first step in possibly removing her from office. We do not know yet what kind of timeline they will begin that impeachment process on, but we will continue to track that story for you. And that does it for us this week. Will Keneally, have a great rest of your weekend. This has been For the Record. Thank you.